Apple today released iOS 17.5. And in this one, there's actually more new stuff than I would expect this close to WWDC. If you didn't know, WWDC is coming up very soon. If I go into the calendar, I can show you right here. It starts on the 10th. So we're gonna see the first look of iOS 18 on the 10th. It's just gonna be the betas. It's gonna be betas for a while until September. But just so you know, you're gonna see a lot of new stuff. I'm gonna have that posted. It is just four weeks away. So before we know it, it's gonna be here. So just keep all that in mind. Like I said, there's actually more in this update than I would have expected at this point in the process of iOS. So one thing that I can't show you that Apple did is with the EU, we know they had third party app stores. Well, along with that, now they can actually load third party apps through the web. So you would actually be able to just kind of have your app live on the web if you're in the EU. So obviously I'm not in the EU. I can't really show you how all that works, but it is there for all those folks that are from the EU. Now, one of the major changes, I guess, with this one is a new wallpaper. So if I come in here, I go through, I go to add, and if I come down here, it should be in here, right here. So we have new pride wallpapers. So we can kind of just look right in here. I will say like the animation is kind of cool with these. So let's just go ahead and hit set as wallpaper. And I'll just kind of show you how it works. So you have a little wallpaper right here. And as you unlock it, like it's kind of like animates. So it's kind of cool as of right now, this is really one of the only ones that does it, but you can just see, I'll show you one more time. I don't think it moves like the watch. So the watch one, you can kind of move around and it changes, but on this one, it just kind of moves the other stuff. Hopefully in iOS 18, they'll give us that are a little less prideful, uh, a cool animated watch face as well. Let's go ahead and just change that back over here. So what else is new in iOS 17.5? Well, if you're a News Plus subscriber, you now can go under following and there's an actual puzzles section, which is kind of cool and actually makes me want to sign up for News Plus, but I'm not going to do it today. But you can see you can go in here and there's different crossword puzzles and different like ways to have, you know, kind of like a what a newspaper would have back in the day when people actually got newspapers. I know some of you probably still do. I haven't gotten one since I was a kid. But if you do like crosswords and all that stuff and you are a News Plus subscriber, you do now have access to that. Also with News Plus, if you scroll down in the settings app, you also have the ability, if I can find it, I guess it's probably not that far down. The news, there it is, news right here. You can go in here and you can actually have automatic downloads. So you can download articles in the background. So when you are offline, you'll still have access to it. With puzzles, you can also, if it's not by default, you can enable Game Center, which gives you the ability to kind of share your results with other people that you are following in Game Center. It's kind of nice that they're adding that offline access for those that, you know, you're going on a flight and you still want to be able to read your news articles while you're on that plane. If you don't have Wi-Fi, now you'll be able to do that with the automatic downloads. Another thing that they're working on is in the Find My App under devices. If I go up here with my iPhone, and let's say I wanted to remove it, it says you can't remove this iPhone, prepare this device for repair. This iPhone is linked to your Apple ID and cannot be removed while it's online, but you can still prepare it for repair. Now, as far as I understand what this is, is if you're in contact with Apple, they want your device to be kind of removed from iCloud before you get it actually to send in for repair. So this is just an extra little item that you can actually do. So I can actually prepare it for repair and I probably don't have to completely wipe it like I used to in the past before I sent it back to Apple to actually have 
the screen fixed or whatever else fixed. So they are working on that, which is kind of nice because it's kind of a pain because normally you have to remove it from iCloud and just kind of basically wipe the device completely before you actually send it in. So this is hopefully a little bit of an easier step. But now I have heard that if you actually start this process, you cannot like remove it from this repair mode. It doesn't really hinder you at all, but at the same time, only use this when directed probably by an Apple specialist. Another item is the Books app. So if I can spell correctly, here we go, Books. This app just recently was updated with the ability to set reading goals. So if I come in here, I can tap right here. Well, if I could have tapped right, scroll back up, tap right here again. Oh, come on. So right here I have reading goals. So you can say today's reading, I've not read any in the, the books app yet, but I have a five minute reading goal and you can probably change that to as much as you want. So if I go to just goal, I can go up to 10 minutes or 30 minutes or whatever you want to go. Let's see how high does it go? It goes all the way up to 1440 minutes. So keep all that in mind. Good luck. If you're somebody that reads that much, I'm, I'm jealous. However, you can kind of see your progress you can start a streak. You can add books that you want, three more books to reach your goal. So it's kind of cool. It's kind of nice. It's just that little gamification a little bit of reading, which I know helps a lot of people. So it's nice to see that the books app is getting a little extra love still after all this time. A podcast app also got some updates. So the main thing is with the widget. So if I go in here, I currently don't have a widget, but I can go quickly and just add one from podcasts. If I scroll down. So let's go ahead and just add this widget right to my stack. So you'll see right there, it's just kind of the color of the podcast app. But if I come in here and I actually, let's go ahead and turn the volume down first. And I resume. So now you can see that widget has actually changed to match the color of the album art rather than the podcast app icon. If I come back into the podcast app and I start a different one and close out, now you can see it is actually turned to yellow to match the artwork of this one. Another update that we have gotten is if you search for podcasts, now you can see I'm searching for podcasts. It will actually show my recently played podcasts right up here with the podcast app, which is really nice if you want to go directly into listening to the other podcast. We'll see, it looks like there's a little bit of bug. There it goes. Now it just started right there, and now I have the red as the widget color. Another issue that I've not heard anybody actually talking about, but I personally have had it, and I'm not sure if it was fixed server side or inside iOS 17.5, but in my home app, I was having issues with actually changing my cameras. So normally I have the recording option to stream and allow record. Well, they were stuck in either just stream or nothing mode. And I was not able to change them until the iOS 17.5 update came out. And now I can go back and forth without any issues. Like I said, I'm not sure if this was something server side or something with iOS 17, but if you've had that issue, you should now be able to change them back and forth without any issues, which has been so great. There's one bug that Apple hasn't addressed or at least mentioned fixing. I've not had a problem with it, but it's with the alarm clocks, the alarm clock not going off. The Apple has reported that they are fixing it and most likely it is probably in this update, but they have not said anything at all. Now with the iPads, and this may only be with the new iPads, we are supposed to be getting the ability to actually go and see your battery health with them as well. 
So right now I don't have that ability. I just have my current charge rate and everything like that, but maybe it's only with the new ones or maybe it will be coming out in like an iPad OS 17.5.1 for everybody. Hopefully we get it in more than just the new ones because that would be kind of a bummer if it's only in the new ones, but that may be what Apple does. They've done that in the past. So we'll just have to wait and see how that all works out. But that is there in the code and we should be getting something with it very soon. As far as Apple release notes so far, there is an accessibility update that they fix. There's also app tracking transparency. It says inaccurately returns denied authorization that that's been fixed. Couple core motion fixes the eSIM. So developers now have a little bit more access with eSIM with testing, I believe is what it is. New universal link for eSIM install. There's also a wallpaper fix that the sheet does not load any content after restoring a device that's been fixed. And there's also a store kit with the terms of service. When you tap that terms of service button, I guess it could cause a crash. This update was also fixed on the watch. If you want to see everything new in watch OS 10.5, you can click right here. And that is it with iOS 17.5. I hope you guys have liked this video. If you did hit that like button, if you want to see more, iOS 18 is right around the corner. So be sure to hit that subscribe button and I'll see you in the next one. God bless.